I have an unbelievable surprise guest speaker for you today, Mr. Brian Tracy, lifelong fan of your work. Thank you so much for agreeing to spend a few minutes with me today. Well, thank you. You know, you you and I um, uh, have had, what do they say in the, in the movie? We've uh, uh, shed the same blood in the same mud. If you remember that movie, you and I have uh, made our living and come uh, from uh, nowhere uh, to where we are by learning how to sell. And uh, I know that you're a fan of my information on closing. And I remember when I started off in selling, uh, I asked myself the question, and this is really important, is what is the uh, one factor that determines your income more than any other factor? This is called the constraint. It's called the limiting step or the constraint. What is the one factor? And I realized it was my ability to close the sale. Actually, I wasn't afraid to, to make calls. I wasn't afraid to knock on doors. And I did, I, in my first year, I knocked on more than 20,000 doors and got almost 20,000 rejections. And, uh, but I wasn't afraid. I'd just get up in the morning, six o'clock, I'd be out there and make my first call at eight o'clock. My rule was if, uh, they, if they are available, um, I'd be there. And I'd be knocking on doors, at, I would knock on doors until uh, 9, 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. If the light was on, I'd be there. And um, I realized that it was my ability to ask for the order, my ability to close was the, the critical factor. So I de gave myself a, a, a goal to become really, really good at closing sales. And I eventually I did. It takes time and it takes a tremendous amount of rejection, but I uh, eventually I became better and better and better at it. And my income went up and there's a wonderful relationship between your income and your confidence, your level of happiness. You start to make a lot of money and you start to be happy. And when you're happy, you have a lot of energy. When you have energy, you're more eager to get out there uh, and make calls. And so I have, I uh, worked on becoming really good on closing the sale. And the wonderful thing is that I've told more than 5 million people live that you can learn any skill you need to learn to achieve any goal that you need to achieve. And uh, so you could become really, really good at asking for the order. And, uh, and I did. And uh, over time, I uh, made a lot of money as well. But as we were talking about, it's not the money that you make, it's the, uh, the effect that you have on the lives of other people. Absolutely. Yes. I love that. It's, 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 it's amazing too, how you can, it's, it's, it's a choice how good you get at, at closing the deal. And it's amazing. You just talked about how, if you want to be really good, you chose to be really good. You made that decision. Yes. Not everyone's wired that way. Where does that come from to where you commit to doing something and you really follow through and execute? Well, one of the things that we have is that, um, it's the biggest single problem in adult life is the feeling that I'm not good enough. Mm. I'm not good enough. And I've studied this in psychology. Uh, it's what holds people back more than anything else. And so you simply turn it around and say, I am good enough. I can, I can do this. I can learn anything I need to learn. And uh, I have taught this for, for now almost five decades. And one of the things that I found is that uh, our greatest problems in life come from our uh, childhood and, being, and and how we were raised. And so as a parent, are you married, Cody? I am. Yes, sir. You have children? No children yet. No, sir. Well, the, the most important thing as a parent is to continually tell your children how good they are. Tell them how much you love them and tell them how good they are. Yeah. And um, no matter what happens... You tell them the most wonderful words in the world are, you can do it. You can do it. And uh, when you keep telling your kids you can do it, eventually, at a, at a very early age, it's sort of like programming, is you uh, program them to believe, I can do this. I can do anything I put my mind to. Um, and uh, at the beginning of their lives, they will have so much self-doubt. You say the biggest single problem is self-doubt, is they don't believe in themselves. But you, as their parent, um, are the most important person in their lives. And so, therefore, just, just tell them all the time how good they are and how great they are. And if they make a mistake or they don't do too well, you say, all right, well, uh, pick up and try it again. 
and you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And that's a wonderful thing for children to hear. And eventually it reaches the point where they, it, it, it sort of locks in and they start to believe it. And then after that, nothing can stop them. That's awesome. That's such, such good advice too, because I, I really believe I, I had a, I'm about to get into my story and how much you've affected me and, and, and your material, but I really believe what you just said resonated and made a ton of sense with me because I get the question a lot, you know, um, how were you able to have confidence in yourself at an early age? And I really believe it was my parents instilling the confidence and those positive, encouraging words, just like you talked about my mother and my father. Yes. Um, and that gave me a tremendous advantage, hugely grateful and was amazing blessing. And, and so my parents were uh, that positive influence for me. And they made me believe, just like you just said, for whatever reason. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't know if they listened to you and then, and then implemented that in me. I don't know. But I do know that uh, they made me believe I could accomplish anything in life. Period. Yeah. Yes. And, and they, you, you don't understand. Parents don't understand that, uh, that you are the greatest single influence in the life of your children. And I say, uh, I've taught this to so many people, but I say, whenever you see an adult who is has problems, uh, you see a bad childhood, is that their parents, my, my parents gave me no support at all. Uh, the only thing that they did was criticize me. Uh, I, uh, I say this, and if you've, if you've reviewed my material, I'll say that destructive criticism is the, is the cancer in uh, all of human life is when parents criticize their children, it just is like a punch in the emotional gut. And um, it holds them back and, and, and causes them to doubt themselves uh, more and more. <clears throat> and the opposite is constant encouragement, constantly telling them that they're good and, and, and complimenting them on uh, everything that they do. Even if they just do something little, always tell them how good they are, how great they are, how wonderful it was. Just make a big thing of it. And my, my, my kids are, are so used to hearing me uh, talk to them. They say, oh, dad, you're always saying that. And then they look at the, their, 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 their friends and they find that their friends don't get that. And then they realize it takes them many years. They realize, wow, wow, what, what they're getting from me and from Barbara uh, is, is very rare. And so they, now three of my children are married and um, they, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, three of them are married and they do the same things with their children. They're constantly telling their children how good they are. And their children are just so happy. The children laugh and they run around and they're happy. And there's, you know, like that Western song, never is heard a discouraging word, is that there's just no negative conversation in their lives. And, uh, and that means they get better grades and they're more popular and they uh, uh, like other people, they like themselves, and that's what we need to do. And I think if you're, it sounds like your parents were really great, and so you uh, will be a great parent uh, when your children come along. The most wonderful thing in the world. I'm now 77, I just turned 77 a month ago. Wow. And um, uh, as I look back, I realize that this is the most important thing in my life is, is what happened to my children. And we look at the kids and we talk to them and, and they, our kids just sort of bask, right? like, like sitting in the sun. They just bask in the warmth of continuous approval, continuous um, positive feedback. And um, so you just keep on doing that, keep on doing that. And it's wonderful because you continually build your children up and it makes you feel happy and it makes them feel happy. And then they will marry someone who uh, has the same philosophy of life is they feel positive and they feel happy. It's just a, it's a, just a wonderful continuing circle. And that's, uh, that's what we need to do as, um, uh, as salespeople. The most powerful statement I ever learned was the words, I like myself. And mm -hmm. you've heard me talk about that. I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. And the more you say it, the more you depress or push down uh, thoughts uh, of uh, self-doubt uh, and the more you feel positive and encouraged about yourself. So I have so many of my friends in sales that'll get themselves cranked up uh, just before they go into a call or pick up the telephone as they'll say to themselves, 
I don't like myself. I like myself. I like myself. And then they pick up the phone or they knock on the door or they walk in. I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. And what that does is it just lowers all their fears and all of their doubts. And they just feel happy about themselves. And as a result, their relationships with their clients are excellent as well. Anyway, so so that's what we do. I love that. I love that. Well, I need to formally thank you for the positive influence that you had on my life. Um, our, our viewers, we had over 10,000 register for, for, for this. And, oh, wow. and they've heard me recommend you time and time again. They've heard me that, that your book, The Art of Closing the Cell, uh, was the first sales book I ever picked up. Um, I love the story of how you were going house to house. People were, tell, people were telling you they want to think about it. They want you to call them back. And I started to implement that and was able to close a lot more deals immediately without, without having to follow up with people. Also, um, I've recommended that other salespeople in the interest industry do that as well. And they've seen a lot of um, positive encouragement and feedback from using that. And it's worked for them, too. So thank you for um being a big help to me making six figures my first year and the hundreds of thousands of other people that you've been able, possibly millions probably that you've been able to help as well. So thank you very much. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. Thank you. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast. We've had the Mr. David DuFord back in Springfield Mo in the studio. Dave, welcome back. To Greetings and salutations. Dude, I, like, I love spending time with you, man. Well, thank you. I, I do too. I really do. It's fun. You're such a great host.